everyone, welcome back. My name is Diana, AKA Bookish Die, and we're gonna be doing something a little bit different uh, for this video in the next several videos. So instead of talking about uh, my TBR, what uh, my book haul or library haul is, um, anything like that, I'm gonna be talking about women's soccer. So if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably <laughs> realized by now that I am a big women's soccer fan. Uh, my team, the Washington Spirit, is doing surprisingly well this year. I'm shocked. Uh, I'm sure other fans are shocked. I was not expecting this. Anyway, um, and the reason we're talking about women's soccer, or I'm talking about women's soccer, is that starting July 7th is the 8th FIFA Women's World Cup. It is going to be held in France from June 7th through July 7th. Um, Anyway, so I uh, decided to combine two of the things I love, talking about books and women's soccer. So just a general overview of what's gonna happen. This video is gonna be talking about uh, FIFA and the Women's World Cup more generally. I'm gonna provide some recommendations in terms of books, um, both about uh, FIFA and how corrupt and terrible it is. Um, and also some recommendations for books more specifically about women's soccer. I'm also uh, going to provide some recs uh, for folks to follow and I will be linking that down below um, because there are, a wide no there are a large number of really great people uh, to follow on Twitter who talk um, a lot about women's soccer and who know a lot more than me. Um, anyway, there's also some great podcasts um, that I'll also be recommending. Uh, and then the next several videos, I will be breaking down uh, the Women's World Cup group by gr group by group, focusing on each individual team, highlighting their history, uh, players to watch, and then uh, pairing that team with an author, uh, either from the country specifically or uh, from the diaspora, and talking a little bit uh, about the author and their works. Um, they're all female authors. Most of them are speculative fiction authors, um, although there are some who are not because some of them are really hard to find. Um, all of them are going to be, are, do have books available to read in English, um, just because I plan on using this list uh, to build my own TBR at some point. Anyway, so I really hope that you like this little video series. And I hope you all stick around and share it with other folks who you know like sports or like awesome ladies. So to begin uh, talking about the Women's World Cup, this is the eighth edition. The first Women's World Cup was held in 1991 in China and it wasn't actually called the Women's World Cup at the time. It was the Women's Championship sponsored by M&Ms or something. Anyway, it wasn't until 1995 when it uh, officially became the uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. Previous champions include, or the defending champions are the United States. They have won it a total of three times. Other winners include Germany, who won it in 2000, 2003 and 2007. Norway, who won it in 1995. And Japan, who won it in 2011. Uh, the United States are favorites again to win, but uh, host France and uh, England are also considered to be strong contenders, um, uh, possibly uh, European champions, the Netherlands, and I believe Australia is also considered um, a possibility as well. Uh, my team is Canada. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about them later. As much as I would like them to win, I doubt they actually will, <laughs> um, but I'll be pleasantly surprised if it happens. Anyway, um, so more generally, one of the things uh, that's great about the Women's World Cup is that it highlights teams from around the world. But one of the downsides, or one of the things that it unfortunately highlights is that there is inequality in which teams get funding. So you have teams like the United States, you have teams uh, like France, uh, like Australia, like Japan, where there are where there is this very strong investment in women's soccer, not as um, strong as they could be, um, currently, the United States Women's National Team is suing uh, the United States Soccer Federation uh, regarding uh, disparities in income and treatment. Um, and after the 2005 World, Women's World Cup, the Australian women's team, the Matildas, 
uh, went on strike protesting unequal and unfair treatment from their federation. Um, but there are teams that uh, have very little support from their federation. And so you're going to be seeing, you know, some teams like Jamaica, Argentina, Chile, um, who have been fighting for recognition from their federation. So if you see when you're watching really unequal score lines, just keep that in mind that even though these women are all incredible athletes and they're competing on the highest stage, they don't all have uh, support for things like nutritionists, uh, good travel, uh, physios. And so it there's just a lot of unequal treatment uh, and disparities within women's soccer. And it's really disheartening because all these women are just absolutely incredible athletes. Um, and part of that is because FIFA is corrupt as hell. Um, and there's really no incentive for there to be sustained continual support of women's soccer. Um, and so for a little bit more background on to why FIFA is the way it is, I have two book recommendations. The first is The Ugly Game by Heidi Blake and uh, Jonathan uh, Calvert. This is a book regarding uh, the the 2022 Men's World Cup that's going to be held in Qatar. And the two journal the two authors are journalists who helped break the story regarding bribery surrounding the 2022 bid. Um, and so this book is a really has some really good insights into what FIFA structure used to be like, a uh, set blotter, um, and how the the pretty much all the men uh, in charge of individual country federations, but also uh, the national or the um, regional confederations uh, pretty much robbed uh, their constituents and also just really highlights how, how FIFA got to the point where it is. Uh, the other book I would recommend is Red Card, How the U.S. Blew the Whistle on the World Sports Biggest Scandal. This is by Ken Bensinger. He is a sports reporter at BuzzFeed. And so this picks up uh, where, the ugly, cause where the ugly game leaves off because the ugly game is very much focused on that 2022 uh, bid, whereas Red Card focuses on how the United States Department of Justice uh, built a case against many of the men uh, at the top of FIFA using uh, or that started with an IRS audit of Chuck Blazer, who uh, was one of the big or who was one of the main figures at, in the North American Confederation, uh, him and Jack Warner. And for folks who watch John Oliver, Jack, you might remember Jack Warner uh, from John Oliver's uh, feud with him that involved the mittens of disapproval, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I would recommend both those books to just get an overview of FIFA, its corruption, and really understand how it incentivized this situation where our women's teams are fighting for recognition and funding. Uh, for women's soccer specific books, my first recommendation is in um, Under the Lights and in the Dark, Untold Stories from Women's Soccer by Gwendolyn Oxenham. This book was published a few years ago and it highlights um, a number of women's soccer players from around the world. So profiles include Ali Long, who at the time of the book's writing was fighting for a spot on the women's national team. She is currently on the roster for France, or for um, the US team uh, for France. Uh, it also highlights uh, players from Africa, from Asia, um, from Brazil, um, and also talks about uh, the women's semi-pro, a woman, a woman semi-pro team in the United States uh, that's run by a conservative Christian group that uh, will kick out players if they, it turns out they're LGBT. Um, my, the next recommendation is a more recent book. It came out this year. It's called Soccer Woman, The Icons, Rebels, Stars, and Trailblazers Who Transformed the Beautiful Game by Gemma Clark. Uh, so I haven't read this one yet. Uh, a friend picked up a copy for me uh, when the author was doing a signing in DC, uh, but it's based off of over 50 interviews and it sounds really cool. The author did an interview uh, with Jen Cooper on the Mixed Zone podcast, and it just it sounds amazing. It 
If you're looking for stories from female soccer players, I would really recommend this book. Next up is more of an academic book, so it might be difficult to find. It's called Futbolera, A History of Women and Sports in Latin America. It is by Brenda Elsie and Joshua Nadal. So it's looking at the history of women's sports in uh, Latin America from the lens of women's soccer. Um, because even though uh, countries like Brazil have amazing players like Marta, um, women's soccer is not as big there uh, for a variety of reasons, including the fact, for example, that in Brazil, women's soccer was banned by the military dictatorship. And so it, it documents a lot of the barriers these women face. And uh, Brenda Elsie is a co-host on one of my favorite sports podcasts, so I'm very excited to track this book down and read it. Uh, next up is The Making of the Women's World Cup, Defining Stories from a Sports Coming of Age by Kieran Thievum and Jeff Kasuf. These two authors are two of um, the two well-known women soccer journalists. Uh, Kieran Thievum is based in the UK and Jeff Kasuf is based in the United States. Um, and it is also a new book and I really like their journal or their um, journalistic writing. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this as well. Uh, there are also some books that are more based on individual national teams. Uh, there's the National Team by Caitlin Murray. It is about the U.S. Women's National Team, and it was published this year. And then there's a book about uh, England's women's team called The Lion or The Roar of the Lionesses by Carrie Dunn. Uh, if you're interested in following along the Women's World Cup. Uh, some websites I would recommend include The Equalizer. It is an online uh, women's soccer specific website. Uh, it it, in addition to covering the national team, also covers college women's soccer and the NWSL, as well as occasionally uh, the European leagues. Uh, I would also recommend The Athletic. They are have been ramping up their coverage of women's soccer. One of their main contributors to that is Meg Linehan, who is a fantastic follow on Twitter, but they also um, recently had an article by Shreen Ahmed, who is a Canadian journalist, who is a co-host along with Brenda Elsie on that sports podcast I mentioned earlier, Burn It All Down. Finally, I would the last website I would recommend, or the other two websites I would recommend are Keep Your Notes, which... Uh, just relaunched. It mostly focuses on the two Houston professional teams, the Houston Dash, which is the men's side, or the women's side, and the Houston Dynamo, which is the men's side, but it also covers a lot of women's soccer in general. And its owner, Jen Cooper, is really, really knowledgeable. And then there's All for 11 with Roman numerals, so X1. Um, and that is run by Steph Yang, who goes um, by the handle Thrace on Twitter. And it just launched on SB Nation, and it's already a really good uh, read, so I'd recommend that as well. For podcasts, I would recommend Two Drunk Fans. It updates sporadically. Um, it is hosted by Steph Yang and uh, Gabby, and it's, it's two fans talking women's soccer, um, not only national team, but also the NWSL. They have really good insights. Um, Next is The Mix Zone, which I mentioned earlier, that's hosted by Jen Cooper. It uh, is normally Jen Cooper with two interviews uh, per podcast, and so she always gets really, really good um, people to talk to, so not just based in the States, but also like based in Australia, based in Canada, based in England, based in other parts of Europe. So it, it provides a really good overview. There's a huge backlog of episodes if you really want to dive into that. Um, Throwback is hosted by Grant Wall from Sports Illustrated, and it focuses on that first Women's World Cup in China. And then Burn It All Down, which is uh, one of my favorite podcasts. It's a feminist sports podcast. So it doesn't just talk about women's soccer, but it also talks about um, all sorts of different sports. Uh, the co-hosts are all amazing. There's fantastic conversations, and they're going to be talking a lot about the Women's World Cup this uh, summer. Finally, some journalists to follow. I've mentioned several of them already. There's Steph Yang, who goes, and I'm again, I'm going to be linking all of these down below. Uh, Steph Yang, who goes by Thrace, um, Meg Linehan, Shreen Ahmed, Jeff Kasuf, uh, Caitlin Murray, Jen Cooper, um, Dan Loletta. Um, 
yeah, there's just, there's a lot of great coverage out there. So I'm really excited. Uh, this video went a little long because I can talk about women's soccer uh, for a very, very long time, as you can tell. Anyway, I hope you all stick around and come back for the next six videos where I uh, break it down group by group and then pair them with a woman author. Thank you all for watching. Are you going to be watching the Women's World Cup? Uh, if you are, is there a team in particular you're rooting for? Are you Team Chaos? Uh, and who do you think is going to win it all? Um, like I said, I hope Canada does, but um, realistically, my gut, my bet would be someone like England or the United States. Anyway, thank you again. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.